welcome back to the shop. Today I wanted to start a small tool making project. For the longest time I wanted a Mitosoyu Unimike, but they are quite rare in Germany. So it seems that nobody really has them or uses them. So I decided to build my own. From a friend I got a 0 to 25 mm Mitotoyo uh, micrometer barrel. And this is in pretty good shape. It's carbide faced, so that's good. And that's what we're going to use. I have a piece of 120 80 tool steel. That's some gnarly, gnarly tool steel. This stuff has 2% carbon and 12% uh, chrome in it. And yeah, this is, this is the, this, uh, some evil stuff. It machines quite nice, but it's hard on the tools. And this is my sketch. It's it's a rip off uh, rip off of the Unimic design from Mitotoyo. Um, the barrel will go in here. This is the body. It's, it's C shaped, and the lower lower side of the body is machined and ground flat and square to the barrel. <clears throat> Our, I already have an idea how we will get this surface perfectly square to the barrel um, after hardening the body. I want this to be hardened because this is a measuring surface because you can also use it as a step mic so I want it to be hardened and ground. And you have a drawbar here and something like a strap clamp and you can hold different fixed anvils down here like a <coughs> like a, um, a gauge block or a gauge pin. We will also grind a, a shallow v-groove in the fixed jaw so you can hold a, a thin gauge pin to measure distance for, of a hole against the edge of a workpiece. And that's what we're going to build. Yeah, let's get to work. Oh, before I forget it, these are the these are the design iterations I had, where I fiddled around with the design. Up here is the clamping mechanism, and uh, a few months ago I already did did a sketch of uh, something like this, and it looked about this, but back then I planned to use a smaller um, barrel. Okay, we start out to pre-drill or drill out the the radius of the C-shape, the rear radius. I'm using a 20 millimeter rod approach for this and I'm already in the right position. <clears throat> I never used a rotor approach in tool steel. Let's see how this behaves. There we go. That worked surprisingly well. Uh, this material is... It's quite brittle. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we just roughed out the the opening of the C, of the C shape with a 6mm roughing end mill, ouch, which is hot, at 1000 rpm dry and with a depth of cut of about 9mm. And as you can see the chips got all kinds of funny colors. <clears throat> now we change to a 
eight millimeter four flute carbide amp mill. This is the this is an HPC roughing end mill with uh, with non serrated flutes, and I like to use them as a finishing end mill because they leave quite a good finish, and they are not as expensive as a proper six flute finishing end mill, and they can take quite a beating. I need to shorten one of the legs of the C. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's the reason why I used a used end mill and not a brand new one. Uh, the cut went perfectly fine until the end when all the tension and the part came back and snapped the end mill. So, yeah, this happens too. So, let's take it off. Fortunately, it snapped above the collet. When the end mill snaps in the collet, it tends to chowder up the collet. And that's always a bit bad. Don't want that. Okay, starts to look like a Unimic. <laughs> starts to look like a Unimic, sorta. Okay, I'm setting up to drill the hole for the micrometer drum and the draw bar back here. <clears throat> we will drill the the hole for the drum under size. And we will grind the ID on the lathe of the tool post grinder after hardening because this needs to be square to the bottom surface. And I cannot ensure that this is still straight when we harden it. It will uh, warp in this area, pretty, pretty sure. So I'm going to pick up uh, this edge and center on the thickness after I clamped, uh, clamped it down. I have a screw jack over here so the part doesn't tip down when I put uh, pressure from the drill onto the workpiece. Mill. I'm lightly going to tension the screw jack. So we don't get problems there. Now we change to edge finder and pick up our datums. Okay, I touched off on the first side. I zeroed it, then I touched off on the second side and this is our Y dimension and we want to to divide this by two so uh, Y axis half and now we crank the axis to zero and we're centered over the part okay and last thing is to pick up the this right face of the part
I drilled it only to 9mm because I will run a boring bar through it and open it up to 9.5mm because I want a nice straight and true bore that I can indicate later on the rotary table to do the round over here and also to have a good datum surface to indicate it on the lathe after hardening for the ID grinding of this bore. I'm not going to bother for just creating a straight and true hole with the boring head. I'm just using one of my boring bars from the lathe. This should produce about a 9.4 millimeter hole. And this is nice, I can chuck it up in the collet, chuck, run it very fast. We're going to spin it at uh, 1000 RPM and just go through once. Okay, that should be trued up enough. Now we can move it out and check our diameter. Yeah, as, as I said, about 9.4 millimeters. You can preset such a boring bar pretty precise on the surface plate with a dial indicator, but uh, that was not needed for this purpose because we will grind that bore anyway. Okay. <clears throat> I put the rotary table onto the machine and have the body of the mic clamped down with two strap clamps back here and I have the central bore where the drum will go in over the center of the rotary table. I have my dial test indicator up here and I indicated the bore that we drilled and bored before. So as you can see um, I'm at about two hundredths of a millimeter run out, maybe uh, slightly. Okay, that's pretty much the run out. Now we will carefully tighten these down so we don't move the part. And again, these are only six millimeter or M6 uh, clamping screws, and these are plen plenty strong enough. But I'm not strong enough to hold up this giant wrench, this A bomb sized wrench. And now, oops, now I just rotated the table. Um, now we can check. Okay, we moved it very lightly, but we're still within plus one, minus one, within two hundredths of a millimeter. That's perfectly fine because this is just a cosmetic radius that we're going to mill on there. Okay, let's tighten this down finally. Okay, take off our indicator. Okay, you just saw me rounding over the end of the um, of the uh, <coughs> of the body of an eight millimeter carbide end mill. I took the cut at full height, so we use the full height of the cutter and don't wear out the end. 
and um, I added something to the setup because um, I was not sure if it would hold up to the cutting forces. I have a bolt through the center of the in of the micrometer body, and let's let's tear it apart. It's easier to show than to tell. Looks okay. We have a. We have a stud going up to the center, but down in the rotary table there is only the Morse taper 2 socket, so I had to get a, a 6mm thread somehow under the center of the part. And that's... It's, let's, <laughs> let's move it away from the cutter. I have a block with a threaded hole with a six millimeter thread in there and I had that under the center bore of the part and that's where I had the stud screwed into and the block was clamped down on he outside here with a, with a strap clamp. And I had some packing, I had some packing in here. To take up the clamping force into the rotary table. Otherwise, if I hadn't done this with the central stud, the part would have moved pretty sure because um, the lever to the back side here is pretty long. And the cutting forces would have tilted the part. And this is how it looks now. Nice radius. Looks okay to me at first glance. This is just for the eye. Nothing of function. Okay, next step is to relieve both sides of the body. We are taking off 3.5 millimeters per side. So it's it looks a bit more streamlined. Using a 40 millimeter shell end mill at uh, 100, 100 RPM, yes. I'm using is an oil hardener, so I'm using vegetable oil for quenching. The oil itself doesn't matter, it's only um, oil has a slower heat transfer than water, and that's um, and there are steels that need water to harden because they need a, a fast temperature change, then there are steels that are oil hardeners that need a a lower speed and then there are air hardening steels. They just cool down on air and get hard. So as said, this is oil hardener. <coughs> Problem with oil hardeners is of course the mast and the smoke you produce with the quenching. When I do the when I drop the part into the oil I will take this aluminum a uh, piece of round stock, put it on top and keep the fumes down a bit. And I have my trusty old multimeter with a temperature probe set up in the oven where uh, it's 620 degrees C and the steel has a hardening temperature of 950 about, about something like that. And this oven is rated for 950, so it's also it's a bit hard to reach up to that high temperatures. Normally, the steels I use have a hardening temperature of about 750 or or 800, um, but I'm using this steel because I have it. 
but with a fire brick in front of the door I can keep the heat in the oven a bit better and it will reach the 950 at least if we wait long enough okay let's do this um, this is a long sleeve operation of course hot oil blowing metal you know I drop the piece upright so it doesn't warp very much to the sides and now we'll just leave it in the in the oil until it cools down so we can touch it again and then we will use the remaining heat in the oven to temper it to draw the heat back slightly uh, the hardness back a bit because right now this is glass hard. This is how I harden my parallels too. But the parallels I keep hard. I don't anneal them in any way. <clears throat> now, okay, now as we harden the part, I looked up the temperature for annealing it to about 55 Rockwell C. And that temperature, that temperature is about 440, 450, something like that. Uh, have the I have the diagram here on the phone. It's uh, 400 something, 55 Rockwells, and quenching in oil. I will keep it about 30 minutes to one hour at this temperature and then quench it in oil again. And then we should have it at a good working hardness. Unfortunately, my oven doesn't have a, a controller, so I'm manually. Uh, keeping it uh, plugged in and out to hold it around this temperature. But I already ordered a temperature controller because this really bugs me. Uh, you can't do a proper heat treating without a, a controlled heat treating with this setup. This is very makeshift right now. Okay. Uh, in the meanwhile, while the oven was hardening up, uh, was rising up the temperature, I machined the clamp part, which is still hot from hardening. Um, this part has a slot in it where normal 9mm white gauge blocks can engage, like this. So they cannot uh, rotate out to the side. And this clamp goes on down here and we'll hold the gauge block in place. Up here we will have the uh, mic barrel and back here we will have a draw bar that pulls the clamp up against the body of the mic. And uh, both parts get nice and hard. Next I will drop my file, glass beat them to get off the scale before I do my grinding. Uh, I can't, I cannot glass beat in my own shop, um, but I know somebody where I can do it. And after glass beating we will grind these parts, but grinding will be something for the next episode. So thank you all for watching, hope this is interesting for you. and. Thank you all for watching, see you next time.